What's going on, everybody? We're back here with another video, and today I want to uh, talk about a movie that I'm probably well overdue. It's not not probably. I, I'm a dumbass. Um, I'm definitely well overdue. This movie came out earlier this year, and I just gotten around to seeing it. And I don't know why. I, I plan to go see it in the movies, and I think just other things that come up, you know, life. And uh, I heard that the prequel to this movie uh, came out just like a, I mean, maybe not even a week ago. I think like a few days. And I figured, you know what, with the sequel, with, well, with the prequel out in theaters, I need to check out the movie X. And um, I just want to talk about it. This is going to be a review slash discussion. I don't really have pros. I don't really have cons. Uh, I more of just have things that I really, really liked about the film. And I have them uh, written down and noted here. And I just kind of want to go through everything, things that I really like. Um, as a disclaimer, man, I... As you know, if you, you know people that are returning, people that just came to this, came to the channel. Um, I love horror. I love the horror genre as a whole, and I get really excited when modern horror is doing well. I hear The Barbarian, the film is in theaters right now. Here, that's doing great. I hear Pearl is doing great. Um, I have a lot to say about X. A lot of positive things, and I love seeing modern horror succeed because we need more horror uh films in the the in the in the genre in movies as a whole because they're dying they, they've been dying out for a while you always have you know your michael myers you'll have your scream and things like that but when when a director or a studio wants to take control and take back the horror genre do something fun with it themselves i'm all for it as long as it's quality content so um, I want to make this video because I want to talk about some things that I really, really, really liked about X. Um, some stuff that I, I really took notice of. So I'm just going to go down the list here, uh, maybe elaborate on each, um, on each uh, point and go from there. So as, as a disclaimer too, I mean, I said that word again, didn't I? <laughs> uh, spoiler warning because I'm going to spoil the fuck out this movie. So just letting you know, I'll probably put up on the screen here, um, Straight up spoilers. Uh, I would go to the very end if you want to see my verdict or my, it, you know, is it worth the watch? Um, spoiler alert, it's worth the watch. So let's just go through this here and uh, we're going to just try it like this. This might seem sloppy, but you know what, man? That's the channel for you. That's Deadhead96. Baby, like and subscribe. Thank you. Okay. So the first thing I wanted to point out was the opening shot is chilling. Now, the opening shot, meaning the dead body uh, covered in the sheet, uh, the bloody entrance, the preacher on TV uh, giving the sermon, it sets the tone real nicely. And the scene is during the day, so it's not a nighttime shot, but I love how haunting and disturbing it already is. You don't even know what the hell happened. There's just two cops. I'm assuming one is probably a, a sheriff's, deputy, sheriff's deputy or the sheriff himself. He comes to the house, his buddy's already in there, his partner, and he says, Sheriff, think you want to come look at this? They go down the basement, and they don't show you what um, they see, but obviously you can probably tell it's something horrific, and um, just from the, the entrance and the, the opening shot, and so I love that, and, and, and the, way it's, the way it's shot, uh, and this is one of my points, I'm actually going down the list here, <laughs> um, so I'll go ahead and tell this point now, uh, this opening shot reminded me of the Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul uh, type of film, like um, um, I, I, Peter Gold, Peter Gold, and and uh, I can't remember what the other guy's name is right off the top of my head, but uh, I'll probably go back and edit it, <laughs> um, Vince Gilligan, god damn it, anyway, <laughs> um, so the way that they shoot their scenes, it, it was very reminiscent of what I saw in X. And I like that when it really zooms in on a shot. Um, and and it, that tells a story in of itself. Like you just see the zooming in or the zooming out where you can see the landscape. That's telling a story without anything being said. Um, the music at the beginning as well. During that shot, you hear this harmonizing. Huh, huh. <laughs> that's the best way I can I know it's not great because it's coming from me but you hear this harmonizing um this these it just it's just a harmonizing moment during the opening scene that I really really like and it again it adds on to the bloody um crime scene that they're looking at so then 
you know, as you know, the movie goes back 24 hours prior to what they're looking at. Um, I like the late 70s, 80s vibe. It kind of gives me, I noted in my notes here, it kind of reminds me of like Pet Cemetery, um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, kind of uh, feel to it, which I, I really do like. It also has that film grain. If you notice when you're watching the film, it's not like, it's it's like, you know, HD, you know, it's 1080, 1080p at least, right? But it's kind of got that film grain to make it look an, like an older older movie. And I, I love little details like that. Um, I did think it was funny that the van that the porn crew were driving in, it had plowing service on the side of it. I thought that was pretty fucking funny. <laughs> you know, like the little sexual innuendos, man. I'm like immature as fuck. So uh, I found... <laughs> I found that pretty funny. Um, the uh, the next thing I'll say is the back. They do a lot of back and forth shots in this movie. Like, uh, for example, the Jenna and and Max, um, the Jen, Jenna Ortega. She's starring in this movie. Um, that's who I meant by Jenna. I don't really remember what her name is in this movie, but Jenna Ortega and Max in the pond. I like that a lot. You know, kind of showing two things happening at the same time. Like you'll see the scene and I go to the next one. I thought that was really neat because you don't see that a lot in cinema. Um, I also liked uh, the <clears throat> when the porn scenes were going on, and then it was showing Pearl and uh, Max Maxine, the character in the in the film. It was going back and forth between them two when the when the porn scenes were being shot, and then when Max and Pearl are in the house talking. I thought that was really nice. It's really cool stuff you don't really see a lot. Uh, the the <laughs> this is gonna sound weird, but the filming of porn scenes. Uh, you know, they, they're, you know, the, the sex aside, the way it's filmed, again, the way the grain is, um, the way the editing team made it look like it was being recorded out these old ass cameras. I thought that was really cool. It just really sticks with the time period this movie was made in. Oh, by the way, uh, on top of the filming, the porn scenes, uh, in, in the start of their porn video, the blonde headed chick she opens the door and the guy's outside and he's like yeah you know i need to make a phone call whatever and she's like well my uh, no i need to make a phone call and i need a uh, i need a ride out of here she's like well uh, you know wait for my wait for my dad to get home he's gonna be really mad you want to come inside and i just <laughs> just uh, again sexual innuendos man i'm immature it's hell to comes to that um pearl man Pearl is absolutely terrifying. The old lady. I keep saying Pearl. I hope you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, she's absolutely terrifying. Spying on the porn star, specifically Max. Like, she has a connection with Max that they, they show in the movie. Uh, her and Max resemble each other quite a bit. The way they carry themselves. How they want to be in the spotlight. And so there's a connection there between the two. And I found, I found that interesting and creepy as fuck. And there's a scene later that I think we'll talk about. If we don't, I'll bring it up. Oh yeah, we bring it up, uh, but it's it's creepy as shit. But we'll wait on that. Uh, side by side shots, uh, the singing and pearl scene. So like, there's a there's a scene. So after they make their movie, the porn stars make their movie. They're all just sitting in the cabin, and um, the uh, I can't remember what the guy's name is. The the black gentleman, <laughs> he's playing the guitar, and the uh, blonde chick, she's like singing, and as she's singing a song that. I didn't think it was made back then, but you know, then again, you know, I'm 25, so this is way before my time. And I, and so it show, and but it's really nice. And they were showing that alongside of scenes with um, Pearl, and she's putting the makeup on, uh, the blue eyeshadow. She's trying to look, you know, attractive because she's she's at a very you get the feel that she's a very erotic person, and then you find out that she is. Um, so I thought that was cool. First kill, the first kill against the cameraman rj uh jenna ortega's boyfriend in the movie that was absolutely brutal it was a stabbing it's straight up shanking but just the way it happened this little frail old lady vicious as hell stabs him in the neck and then just on top of him and just keeps hammering away and i thought that was great uh very vicious and and what was cool was this movie is kind of i wouldn't say a slow burn but it builds to that and when it gets there it's totally fucking worth it um i thought that was definitely vicious um but after she kills RJ, the cameraman, she starts dancing. And I, and it's pretty cool because, you know, I didn't know Pearl, you know, we'll go back to the movie that just released. I didn't know that that was a, a prequel to this movie. 
and I'm pretty sure I saw in the trailers of Pearl uh, her dancing during uh, that mo the, that movie a little bit. So we will get a little bit more in that. If you've already seen it already, you can let me know about that in the comments. But I did see that in the in the commercial, the advertisement for it. And I think that's pretty cool that they they're gonna kind of go to that a little bit, you know, um, in the in the prequel. Uh, but it's it's chilling seeing her dance. It kind of reminded me of the Joker in well Joker with uh, Joaquin Phoenix when he kills those three um, the mayor's sons or whatever kills them and then he's in the in the bathroom dancing. I thought that was pretty. It was very reminiscent of that. Um, all the characters are likable. I've liked I like every single one of these characters. Um, I could get along with them. They seem like cool people. They just make it porn. I mean, <laughs> all in all, like they're not. They don't seem like bad people to me. Like, um, they just seem, I mean, yeah, they, they're not people that I probably would want to be friends with, but they're not, I don't think they're bad people, you know? Um, so, you know, likable. I didn't hate a single person in this movie and it was almost, it was kind of, I wouldn't say sad because a lot of them, you know, it was, it was good and it was kind of funny the way some of them were dying and it kind of, it, you know, wasn't sad about it. It was just like, oh man, I like that character, but that was a cool ass death, man. <laughs> All right. Um. Each, uh, I like the, the next thing I'll say is the first person view of Pearl's perspective in the cabin when she's, so I think she, she's already killed RJ at this point. Um, her husband, um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but her husband, uh, and the, um, and the blonde's boyfriend, she, he, they were out looking for Pearl and Pearl was actually in the cabin, uh, looking for Maxine. And so there's a first person perspective when she's walking and she's, you can hear her breathing heavy and the way she's moving, she's looking in doorways, very reminiscent of Michael Myers. And I thought that was awesome. I just, I, I, I dig, I dig that shit so much, man. Uh, Pearl laying in bed with Max naked. Okay. That was what I was talking about before. That shit was freaky as hell. And it's so cool that the, the, um, the actress that plays Maxine, she also plays Pearl. And I, and I knew something was up because when I'm watching the movie, I was watching the movie with my wife and I was like, man, you know, that old lady doesn't look right. I guarantee you that's her. I bet you the, the actress playing Maxine, that's her too. And come to find out it was. And I was like, that makes total sense. Dude, the way she moves, the way she was kind of touching all over Maxine's body, the way she got in the bed, it was just so freaky, man. So damn creepy. I don't know what I'd do if I saw that bitch laying in my bed. I, <laughs> um... The Shining reference. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but when Jenna Ortega gets locked down in the cellar and she's trying to get out and she, she takes the axe and she busts through the doorway and she puts her hand in there trying to open the door. I thought that was straight out of The Shining. I love that. Um, you know, and I don't know if they were trying to do that, but it was a nice little callback. And the scene after that was absolutely rough though because she's trying to, she's got her hand through the door and she's like trying to unlock the door. And when she does that, Pearl's husband comes over with an axe or like a sledgehammer and bam, bashes her hands like three times and you see her fingers all crooked. I'm weird about hand shit, dude. And when I see things happen to people's hands in movies and TV shows, I flinch immediately. So I'm seeing that and I'm like, oh my God, that shit is rough, but fucking awesome. <laughs> I was like, dude, that shit was wild. Um, the crocodile alligator, more like an alligator death scene was gnarly where Pearl pushes uh, the blonde headed chick into the pond or, you know, with lake or whatever. Um, I thought that was pretty gnarly. You know, the blonde girl, she was trying to help Pearl and Pearl was like, I don't need your help, you slut, blah, 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 blah. And <laughs> the blonde girl was like, man, screw you. You can just drown in. And then, I mean, like this little old lady had the strength to push this bitch into the pond or lake. And I mean, then the alligator came in and just gobbled her up quickly. I mean, that shit was like out of the blue, man. It was, it was, it was a gnarly scene. I had a feeling it was coming because they had shown that before with Maxine when she jumped in there, but it still like caught me off guard. Um, the husband and wife, uh, the well husband and Pearl, they are creepy as hell. The bedroom scene where they're talking and she, she just wants some sex and he's like, I can't do it. I got heart issues. And these are, they, you know, they're rather old at this point. I said like 80, 85, well, he ends up giving into it, as we all do, <laughs> and he, and he uh, they they start having sex, and it's so weird, it's so awkward. Maxine is underneath the bed; she can't escape. And 
the, it was just so it was so gross. And and I think my next bullet point after that is I felt like this awkward tension throughout the whole film. It did a good job with that. That's not a negative. And just if I felt uncomfortable, you know what I mean? And that scene was absolutely it, it was so gross. It was disgusting seeing an old man ass and they just go into town. It was oh, gross. Um, Jenna Ortega's death scene. You're talking about scenes that really got me. That made me jump out my freaking seat. I was like, holy shit. Because I'm a big Jenna Ortega fan. I think she's going to be the next Scream Queen. And I'm all here for it. She loves horror. And I say, hey, keep doing it, man. I'm fine with it. Um, but when she, when she ran out the basement door after Maxine opened it up for her. And she's like, man, fuck this. I'm out of here. And she runs out the door. And bam, gets shot with the damn double barrel shotgun. And she just, her face is just melted. I was like, holy shit. She died so quick, man. And it was, it was nuts. Uh, I did laugh though, because Pearl comes in there, uh, with her husband, her husband, uh, he, he like, um, he like falls to his, uh, to his knees and he dies because of his heart, uh, which I guess is not a bad way to go, <laughs> but he, he dies and she picks up, uh, you know, her and, uh, her and Pearl and Maxine, they have a little bit of a confrontation, but then Pearl picks up the shotgun and takes a shot at her, and I mean, this bitch goes flying, and I thought that shit was hilarious, and then Maxine gets in the in the van, backs her over, because she was talking all kinds of shit, and busted her head wide open, and I thought that was really good, the gore there was good, the scene, the way it was shot, I thought that was, I just thought it was perfect, man, um, and then you got the reveal at the end of the movie, um, that Maxine lives, which that's not a reveal. You see that the big reveal is that the preacher that you've been seeing throughout this movie is her father. And I imagine that's going to have something to do with the sequel. Cause I did hear they're going to make a Maxine that's going to continue her story. So I imagine something's going to be with their, with her dad. Um, I'd like to see what you guys think about that. And my last thing is, it's just Pearl is an erotic monster. And I think the prequel goes into more detail with that. And I'm I'm here for it, man. I, I really I really dug this movie for what it was. A little gross, uh, a little bit of sex, um, but you know, all in all, it's a it's a damn good film. So um, that's all I got for you, man. I know this is kind of just me going through different points. It's not really, and I don't really have negatives for this movie. I, I enjoyed it. I love the story parts. I like the characters. Um, I thought it was really interesting. I like the setting, the time period, the way it was shot. Um, I just thought it was a really decent film. I, I, I enjoyed it. And if this is what modern horror is, if this is the trajectory, um, I'm all for it, man. A24, the studio behind this movie, they did a damn good job. Um, I don't remember the, um, I think the guy's name is Ty something, the director of this film. And I think he did a lot of comedy stuff. Um, and it's cool to see like these comedic people actually have like these wild imaginations. Because this movie is wild. It's a good slasher film, but it has its own little twist to it too. And so, um, yeah, I think, man, I, th I think it's worth the watch, man. Go see it. You know what I mean? Well, go see it. Rent it. Rent it. Buy it. It's definitely worth it. Um, and then go see Pearl. I hear Pearl is just as good. And we got us a nice little franchise here, man. Maxine is supposed to be like the cap off of this, of this uh, trilogy. And I'm here for it, man. This is a, this is a great story. Um, it's interesting. It's eerie. It's creepy. And, um, yeah, it's, I love it. <laughs> so, anyway... Uh, thank you guys for watching. Of course, would you mind liking and subbing to the channel? And uh, let me know what you think about X. And have you seen Pearl yet? And if you have, let me know. Is it worth the watch? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Just let me know. Let us know. We'll really appreciate it. And uh, with that being said, stay dead, my friends.